Welcome, 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 my fellow gamers, <laughs> to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. As a matter of fact, this is our 99th episode. The 99th episode. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, if we pass it down and, you know, take it down, pass it around. That'd be great. Yeah. Maybe drunk. Yes. Uh, nice. I'm Rick. And I'm Dave. And uh, we're going to be painting Star Wars Legion again today. Yep. Um, Today, Dave is going to be working on the, what is this, the at The, the at i So I've already, when I was painting the, uh, the Rebel Troopers, um, the other day I uh, painted up the pilot for the at It looks so freaking awesome. He does look pretty cool. <laughs> and it's the pose, isn't it? Slinging yeah. that uh, gun back. And the cool thing that we discovered is that the at -RT pilot in the separate box that's also coming in wave mm. one is a different pose. Yeah, which is awesome. So you don't have to worry about converting. Right. It's super And cool. then if you get a third one, that's oh. when you can convert. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and I'm painting the speeder bikes with the uh, biker troop, or bike, scout, scout, tro scout troopers. Scout yeah. troopers, which are pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. They should be, uh, should be nice and straightforward. Yeah. The color scheme's pretty simple. Hopefully everybody remembers it from... Uh, is it white and black? Maybe. White and black. I, um, think it, I think it might be white and black. Uh, on the troopers here. <laughs> and then the browns and blacks. Browns, brown and black on the, uh, the, on bikes. the bikes. Very cool. So you've got three colors to work with there. Then how come mm -hmm. I have three, four? I lie, I lie. I have four colors. It's like a four-color comic back in the day. Yeah. yeah. It's just like that. It, just like <laughs> it. Uh, make sure you guys go to our Facebook page. I know you're on our Facebook page right now watching us. But afterwards, if you have not yet signed up, uh, we have a very large campaign going on right now where you can enter to win a chance to go to San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, our parent company, Diamond Comic Distributors, is putting on a uh, big event. They're going to fly you and a guest out to San Diego Comic-Con, put you in a hotel room, and uh, you're going to get four-day passes plus preview night pass to San Diego Comic-Con, which yep. is pretty awesome. So please take a moment and, and, uh, and sign up for that. If I you have not done so, I yet. do just have to check. Is that are they sharing a room with you? No, they the, them and their guests will be sharing a room together. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh no, Johnny, Johnny, he's going to be with you. He's going to be with you. I'm still so. with you, Johnny. <laughs> you and me, brother. <laughs> Fantastic. Gonna, that's cool. That's huge. It, it's going to be. Uh, that's super exciting. We started. We kicked it off on Friday, and uh, yeah. uh, we've had some really good response to it already. Excellent. So. I think there's over 222,000 entries already. 222,000? Entries. Yeah. And that's a pretty good response. That's a pretty I'd good response. I'd hate to see a great response. <laughs> right? 222,000, that's insane. Yeah, so we're hoping that we can awesome. get... Awesome. We, cool. we have 63 or 62 days left on nice. the campaign. Cool. So we want to make sure we get it out to everybody that could potentially have an interest in going. Yeah. So. That yeah. sounds great. And I'm going to uh, see who's watching us. And we also have a Gleam campaign on... Our site for Star Wars Legion, all the Star Wars Legion stuff we're painting. Uh, we have everything that's coming out in Wave 1, which is the core box, uh, plus an extra box of Stormtroopers, a box of Rebel Troopers, uh, extra speeder bikes, extra at uh, plus the T-47 air speeder, and mm -hmm. the ATST. Those two things we'll be painting on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and as well, uh, extra... Uh, movement, range rulers, movement right. templates. Should we paint uh, those? Do those necessarily get painted? Nah. I didn't think so either. Eh. Someone recommended it, and I was like, eh, we got a lot of other things we got to paint. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's let's put those at the end of the, <laughs> end of the That makes sense. Thing. So we'll get that out of the way. So yeah, head to Painting Happy Little Minis and check out the pinned uh, post at the top and join the the page. Yeah. A group as well? Join the group. That's what I meant. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you'll be able to sort of join in, get involved with that, which would be very cool. Yeah. So I'm going to get started while you're doing all the sharing. Yes. And so I'm just going to pull it. There we go. Moving it around. <laughs> Come on, Leona. Keeping up. That's amazing. Um, good job. Uh, so I... I Glued uh, a whole bunch of sand down onto the base, uh, primed it with black, and then did a, like a zenithal prime from overhead. I should point around like that uh, to get the, the white on there. Now, I thought this would probably be a little bit sort of lighter and brighter than the uh, studio paint job, 
uh, but looking at the studio paint job, it was, um, it's like, ah, I actually quite like that too. It gives a sort of a bit of a feel of the Rebels. It's not as clean and crisp and uniform right. as the Imperial sort of look. So uh, what I'm going to do here, I'll, I'm going to go for something fairly similar. Uh, so I'm going to start off by doing a little bit of chipping. Um, so that's basically giving the, uh, the vehicle a look like uh, incoming fire or bushes that have sort of rushed past or rocks, rocks that it's scraped against, that sort of thing, have chipped the paint off certain um, edges. So I'm going to get a little bit of uh, one of my favorites, the Vallejo Charred Brown. Dang it, I was hoping it was going to be Brassy Brass. Or Tinny Tin. Tinny Tin. Yeah. yeah. You probably could. You could do some chipping on, on a yeah. Tinny Tin, but I, I'm a big fan of the uh, charred brown chipping. Now, I've just got a little bit of uh, foam here from uh, a blister pack. Uh, I've torn some off, give us a sort of a, a slightly irregular sort of look. And now just damning it there to spread the paint around a bit. And then just having it on along the edges there. Give that sort of initial sort of chipped sort of look. So most of the the uh, ATRT is has that sort of a white sort of bone kind of look. So getting this on um, dab this around with sort of a lot of those leading edges, I guess. Edges that would brush against things. Um, you can actually get this model painted up really quickly. So just add it on there. I put it in one more group. One more group? And that's it. Which group is that? Painting Happy Little Minis. Oh, yeah, probably a good <laughs> idea to put it in there. <clears throat> that would be cool. So, are these minis resin or metal? Uh, they're plastic. They're a. Um, they're not a uh, high impact polystyrene plastic, uh, like you'd find from Games Workshop or um, Weird cool. Miniatures. Oh, weird, yes. Uh, it's but they they are plastic. They're, it's a very sturdy plastic. Um, nice high detail. It's quite. Um, quite strong uh, but uh, yeah so when you're gluing these together you'll need uh, super glue rather than polystyrene cement right. which is also known as plastic glue so I think confusion sometimes comes when you have plastic models that you can't use plastic glue on right so but uh, yeah these ones are the models are quite cool like very very Carl light and, and uh, Drew and Timothy and Daniel yeah. Daniel's got a really cool idea. He says, hi, if you're thinking about painting the movement tools, maybe paint one set white and red for the Rebels and the other one uh, gray and black for Imperial. That is a good idea. That's not a bad idea. Who suggested that? That was from Daniel Helios. Mm. If we're getting down to the wire... Yeah. We'll, we'll send them out to Daniel to paint them for Here us. Here we go. <laughs> so, well, now that I've uh, sort of put all these chips sort of around the leading edges on here. Um, it's quite irregular, which is pretty, uh, pretty much what you want. You don't, nobody goes along and regularly sort of chips away at certain points um, on their vehicle. So these are just things that would happen sort of uh, in the regular sort of wear and tear. But one of the things that you can do is take um, the paintbrush and link up some of these chips. So you can make those chipped areas a little bit larger. Right. Are you cool. going to add any customiz customizing to the miniatures? Blue stripes on the stormtroopers? Paint after lunch? Good times. All right. Zach, uh, we're probably not going to do much, if any, customization to these miniatures because these miniatures are going to be given away to somebody. Uh, somebody is going to win all these, and if uh, they want to customize them once they receive them, cool. Uh, but we just want to make sure we get all of them painted in time. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. For them. So. 
Things are coming along pretty well. Yeah. We've got uh, most of the stormtroopers are done. Uh, we've got about, what, about halfway on the Rebels? Half, well, more than half on the Rebels, because yeah. uh, I just got to base, uh, finish basing and highlight and do faces. Oh, great. Okay. okay. So we're uh, two thirds of the almost two yeah, thirds, two -thirds of, the way. of the way done. Very cool. <coughs> so yeah, you can see um, there. I'm just linking some of those up. Do that. Nice sort of scraped impression. Yeah, that looks really yeah. good. And if you want, you can go along and. Pick out a few areas where you're you didn't get with the sponging. Hey, James, hey, James. is in the house. What's up, James? The uh, important thing with um, with doing the the chipping, as I said, is, is think about where the paint is going to wear off, right? Or where it's, uh, where it's going to be sort of brushed against on a regular basis. And that could be somebody climbing onto or off the vehicle. Okay. Um, something like the speeder bikes and those, the blades at the front, they're gonna sort of plow through a lot of uh, Brush. undergrowth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's what you're, what you're looking for. I think um, probably the, the biggest trap that people fall into when they start to do some sponging or chipping techniques Mm -hmm. Is they go uh, go all over the miniature right. in a fairly sort of regular pattern, and it's like, well, there's nothing at that point there. There's nothing that would be brushing against it. It might be physically impossible to have anything sort of brush against it, right. but they've put it, they've chipped it there. So mm. you just got to be careful. Um, take your time, plan it out a little bit beforehand. To keep that that uh, concept of realism. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I saw something, speaking of seeing that, yep. I saw something posted recently, I want to say Friday or Saturday, uh, yep. someone that we know is uh, writing a book. Oh, that was yesterday. Oh. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Somebody that we know is writing a book. Yeah. I know uh, him quite well, actually. <laughs> I see him every day in the mirror. <laughs> I do, yeah. What is this book you're writing? I'm writing a book. Uh, I, it's a book called uh, Armies and Legions and Hordes. Okay. Oh my! <laughs> and uh, it's basically uh, the philosophy about my sort of philosophies for painting large projects. Uh, okay. So armies, you know, fifty models, hundred models, one hundred and fifty mm -hmm. models, wow. that sort of thing. Yeah. Or big models like the Warlord Titan, for example, mm -hmm. which is a huge, ginormous piece. piece. Yeah. Um, it's about understanding what your inspiration is. For the army, why are you? You might go. I, I want to do this. It's like okay, that's cool, but why do you why? do that? Understanding why is important. Okay. Um, talks about planning, planning out your color schemes. Um, okay. Planning out your painting time, um, making sure you've got enough materials. Sure. All that sort of thing. So um, it's all about that. Talking about motivation, all that sort of stuff, and then uh, showcasing some of the armies that I've painted over the years. Nice. Which, um, How many pages is this going to be? Uh, at the moment, it's planned for about 120 pages. All right, that's not bad. So, uh, and I'm planning hard hardback. Okay. And an electronic version. As oh well. wow! So you're going to give them the the PDF or? Yeah. So uh, the, at the moment, it's a PDF, but um, I'm crowdfunding it. Nice. So if uh, one of the stretch goals will be uh, upgrading the PDF to like a interactive. Electronic publication. Oh wow! Okay. So, which would be pretty sweet. Then it can include some small videos and some spinner arounds and extra okay. photos and all sorts of stuff. So, nice. Um, that'd be pretty sweet. And so, when does that launch? Uh, it's going to be March sixteenth. Ooh, that's so, right around the corner. Yep, just around the corner. It's going to be uh, quite exciting. I'm, I'm excited about it and and terrified in equal, uh, equal, equal portions. Events. Yep. All yep. right. There was a pretty good response to it yesterday when I put up the post. So I agree. Um, not two hundred and twenty-two thousand good, but well, you know, still really good for. But I was, <laughs> I was expecting. Right. I, I was really very, very uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I, and of course, if you're watching and uh, have interest in 
uh, picking up that book. Make sure you follow uh, uh, DaveTaylorMiniatures.com and yep. uh, inside or the painting Happy Little Minis group, I'm sure you're going to post stuff up in there about yep. it, yeah? Yeah, and yeah. if that's cool, if yeah, everybody's okay with that. <laughs> no, I'm absolutely cool with it. So, And uh, we'll try to get that thing super successful. Not yeah. that it won't be. I, yeah. I foresee that it would be anyways. You have a decent right. following in that everybody loves Dave Taylor. In the, in the miniature painting? Community, yeah. Well, yeah. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. There's, nice. uh, I've been thinking about it for about a year. Been doing quite a bit of writing and okay. uh, that sort of thing and started taking some, some photos of some of my armies. So okay. just to start getting things, uh, getting the ball rolling, I guess. So Love it. Quite cool. Uh, Thanks for mentioning it. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Timmy says, definitely Red Shock Trooper. A Red Shock Trooper would be really cool. Um, but th here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, keep your eyes and ears open for new stuff with this set because uh, it's wide open for Fantasy Flight to make all sorts of new content. So do not doubt they're probably going to do Shock Troopers, Death Troopers, um, yep. all of them. Snow Troopers. I think they've already kind of announced yep. Snow Troopers. They have. They've so. announced Snow Troopers um, along with uh, General Veers. Oh, yes. And... Uh, Princess Leia and the fleet, Rebel Fleet Troopers. Okay. Uh, so. so lots of options are going to be going to be popping up. So Yeah, lots of things that they're definitely doing. And, and it's one of those things where, sure, if you, if you want to, go ahead and do it. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. They'll be coming along, but... Uh, if you want them now. <laughs> yeah, you just got to have them. One of the things that, uh, that I always used to do uh, when there were some... Uh, there were units out for a game or not the, the models hadn't been released yet but you could play with a particular unit right I always wanted to play with those units and convert them myself so it was kind of a, a running joke for a little while that the best way to have those models released is make them yourself. Was to make them yourself yeah. yep. <laughs> just as you finished all your hard work the real model shows up of course <laughs> so that's pretty funny but uh, still, then you've got your own unique models, which right. is pretty cool. All right. So, Rebel, uh, anybody? You, you still haven't watched any Rebels, have you? Star Wars Rebels? I have on? not watched any Star Wars okay. Rebels, sorry. All right. Anybody out there that's watching this, uh, all of y'all in there, Timothy and Keith and James and Carl and Drew, all y'all, uh, you guys watching Star Wars Rebels on Disney? Uh, and if so, did you watch last night's episode? I ask because I have not watched it, but I, I accidentally read a a blog spoiler, which, you know, happens sometimes. Ooh. And so I'm pretty excited to actually sit down and watch it tonight. Cool. Because uh, it opens up a lot of potential um, canon fixes, I okay. guess you could say. Oh, and kind of an adjustments kind of thing? Yeah. Where they bring some of the older stuff in line with the newer stuff? Uh, let's just say, uh, spoiler alert, if you don't want to <laughs> hear, what, hear what I'm about to say, you know, just la 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 la, 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 la. for a second. <laughs> uh, they introduce potential um, force travel, like time travel. Okay. Um, they have, I mean, it was already something that was in some of the older content. Right. Uh, I think it was Jace Solo had a somewhat of an ability to move through time. Okay. So, yeah, they kind of introduced that. And it could be something if, if they run with it, because now it is considered canon to the Star Wars universe, uh, it could affect the future of the movies, too. Right. So, some pretty interesting stuff. Because you get to hear Kylo Ren and Rey talking. Decades yeah. before they ever exist. Oh, right. Yeah. It's really weird. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Interesting. Carl says it's turning a little surreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it. I actually wish the guy who's doing the Rebels and... is it, He's also the same guy that did uh, um, Clone Wars. 
on the animated Clone Wars series. Okay. Uh, I wish he would just be allowed to write or direct a, a movie. Right. Because his story arcs are really good. Are you talking about Dave Filoni? Yeah. Filoni. Carl says, can they travel back in time and unmake the last two movies? Oh, Well, this would be traveling wow. forward in time to, to make changes. But, uh, I mean... Can't make changes in the future? Yeah, because it, it, oh, it, okay. it Rebels, expands Rebels all is, time. Uh, where, where does Rebels take place? T so. Rebels takes place before Rogue One. Okay. So between... Uh, Clone Wars. Fa yeah, between Phantom um, or uh, Attack of the Clones. Uh, after even after that, what was the, yeah. the Revenge, of the, Revenge of the Sith and right. New Hope, or Rogue One? Rogue now One. Uh, yeah. takes place in between those. Okay, but uh, he could reach forward in time, go back in time, but it's all through a, this uh, Jedi Temple. You know, so you have to have control or be able to enter this Jedi Temple in order to manipulate. Is it the same things. Jedi Temple that was in um, The Last Jedi? It is not. Okay. This one is on, I'm trying to think of the, um, the planet. Lothar, I think is the name of the planet. That's a great villain name. Lothar. Right, Lothar. I am Lothar of the Hill People. <laughs> Man, if you weren't going to say it, I was going to say that. Yep. Lothal, sorry, Lothal. Okay. So we could make a Lothar. Lothar of the <laughs> Where's that from? Uh, it was a Saturday Night Live oh, skit okay. back in the 70s, I believe. Right. Lothar was a caveman. Before I was an American. Correct, before you were born to the real world. Does <laughs> that mean I'm like 15? Yeah, if you've only been here 15 years, yeah. 16. Ooh. <laughs> Coming up in 16 years. Dang, old man. Next week. That's right. Uh, Keith says the ghost, the ship from yep. uh, Rebels, actually does make an appearance in Rogue One. Okay. Yeah, in the big yeah. fight at uh, at the end that's taken yep. out in space while they're doing the land combat. Yep. Uh, the ghost kind of. Okay. Jumps into that okay. space. Cool. Okay. While we're talking about that, one of the the next things I did just to break up a little bit more of that. Um, the white sort of space was went and picked out some areas <coughs> in silver, so around the joints, um, some of the pistons that are in there, and these two two pieces sort of at the back here, two little tanks. I'm not sure exactly what they, if they're tanks or or what, but uh, yeah. So. That's going to be good. It's going to hit that with a uh, <laughs> non-oil wash. Everybody's like, look at that pretty walker. So good. <laughs> it's so beautiful. When I walk with my woman, Lothar of the Hill people. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's easier to move my hands. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes people I still don't pay attention. I guess, actually, one of the things that, um, that I like to ask everybody in the chat is uh, if you can head to the, the group page and post up your uh, thoughts on any sort of iconography or... Um, lettering or that sort of thing that I should put on the the ATST. Oh yeah. And that like the front panel and the side side okay. panels that we're talking about those large flat areas. Yeah. Well, I suggested the death marks or what is that what they're yep. called? The kill markings. Kill markings. Oh. Put little Ewok heads. <laughs> I was going to suggest there's some uh, Star Wars text or fonts called Aura Besh or something like that. Yeah. I mean, the symbols are kind of intricate, so it may be like, difficult. I don't know how small you can get, but... I think it could probably, um, probably get fairly small, maybe like three or four millimeter high. I mean, I could put that along the, the bottom of one of those side panels or something like that. 
or if anybody's sort of found any imagery in any of the movies <laughs> or uh, um, the uh, animated series, feel free to throw those up. I'll check those uh, out. Carl's like, I have no idea how you can paint and be aware of the cameras. You're doing great. <laughs> we have a monitor in front of us, so we check our positioning to the camera to the monitor. Yeah, so whenever I'm looking up and not looking at a camera, yep. I'm checking that monitor. So The tough part, of course, is that the monitor's on like a one and a half second delay. So when I see something and then I, I move, move the model, it moves. Patrick, the monitor. Patrick is asking uh, it freaks me out. the scale between these and Imperial Assault. Uh, I think we have, do we have some photos? Or I don't remember when we showed it. I do remember we showed it before in a previous episode. Yep. They're they're what three to five millimeters bigger. Yeah, something like that. I think. Uh, so I think. Um, twenty-eight to thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah. I probably I probably put the Imperial Assault around twenty-five. Mm -hmm. To be honest, and these are about thirty-two. Yeah. It kind of varies, but as far as scales mm -hmm. go. Um, and plus a definition as far as like uh, like the ATST right. of this set compared yep. to the Imperial Assault set is night and day. Oh, yeah. It's yep. Huge difference. Yeah. Well, that's the, it's the, for that, I feel that's the difference between um, what you'd have for a board game mm -hmm. and when you have for a hobby miniatures game. Yeah. Where... The focus is on not the, the focus, but perhaps focuses still on the game. But mm -hmm. um, but it's a larger miniatures are a larger part of it, right? So I'm just quickly going to paint this. Uh, Jack is asking, where can I buy Star Wars paint minis? Um, can you elaborate on that, there, uh, Jack? Uh, you can pick up these miniatures uh, March. 22nd? March 22nd, yeah. At your, at your friendly local game store, and then you just pick up some paint and you can paint them yourself, um, yep. which is what we all recommend you do. Uh, or you can find someone that is a good painter and maybe commission them. There are many good, very good painters out there in the world yep. uh, that do commissions. And, quite a few uh, of them are watching the show. That's right, and I know we have at least two watching the show right now that take commissions. That's Drew with One Inchero's and uh, Josh with Mini Paint Studio. Uh, and I'm sure there's others that would also be inclined to take some commissions. Yeah. But if you can, you know, take, take a moment and do it uh, yourself. Yep. Give it a shot. And join the uh, Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group because in that group you can actually uh, ask questions of these pro painters, and they have all been extremely helpful in uh, improving everybody's ability to paint. Yep. So. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Very awesome. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm going to be talking with a friend of mine, uh, John Andrews, okay. from uh, Oklahoma, I think. I think John's out in Oklahoma at the moment. All right. But... Uh, He's starting up a new podcast cool. called uh, Combat Hand, uh, Star Wars Legion podcast. Nice. So uh, they're going to, because I've spent a lot of time working on these models now, yeah. um, he wanted to sort of chat with somebody who'd had some experience with them. And nice. Talk about uh, how easy they are to put together or paint, that sort of stuff. So I talk with them tomorrow night, and then I'll find, so that's just the recording of it, and I'll find out when it's going to be. Available. Available and cool. let folks know. And share that in Painting Happy Little Minis. Yep. Not you, uh, of course, don't already get to hear me talking a lot about minis. <laughs> Star Wars Legion minis. But, uh, yeah, uh, it'd be pretty cool. I think, um, I think it's going to be good. John's a good guy. Nice. And I will be on Below the Belt tomorrow night, a radio show. Yeah. Talking about uh, geek stuff. Cool. About painting happy little minis. I, sh I will bring it up. Cool. So that's all we ask, Rick. That's all we ask. Because you know, it's <laughs> it. I believe it's 
more in line, obviously, with like the wrestling community. Okay, pretty good. But they are always talking about pop culture and everything, so... Right. Um, we'll That's talk cool. about all that stuff, and we'll talk about, you know, the different contests that we run here and everything. So, speaking of which, if you are tuned in and you didn't hear earlier, uh, we are doing a big Gleam contest where uh, you can win all of the Star Wars Legion Wave 1 miniatures painted by Dave and I and others yep. that have been guests on here or with Drew and Jeff. Drew and Jeff. And, uh, there'll probably be others. Cause, and some terrain will be involved in this. Yeah. So we should uh, have uh, Jake Landis and Brian Delaney helping us out with terrain. Nice. That's our current plan. So lots of cool stuff. Um, so go to that Gleam uh, campaign that we got going on on the Facebook page. Enter and hopefully one of y'all will win. I mean, what, somebody will win, but, yeah. you know. Hopefully, Benny, somebody who's watching right now. Yeah, that'd be great. And then uh, we also have another big one, our parent company, Diamond Comic Distributors, in association with all of their other companies to include Alliance and everybody, uh, is also doing a San Diego Comic-Con giveaway where someone can win a round-trip ticket, hotel, and passes to San Diego Comic-Con this year. Uh, so go check that one out as well. That's huge. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so now I'm just uh, turning along, hitting the the highlights of all these silver parts with some um, Vallejo aluminium. All right. Aluminum. Uh, and then we'll get into some shading on the the white. Uh, Thomas says he missed the rust effects. Did you use a sponge method? I did. He did. Yep. That's right, Thomas. Uh, there we go. There's the sponge. Yeah. Yeah. So they're basically just dabbing that along the uh, the lead edges of the uh, armor plates and so on. So it looks like that. It's pretty cool. Such good stuff. So yeah, just wanted to do that as a chipping sort of scratch, scratching the paint off kind of kind of thing. Um, the, that chipping effect, or uh, well, the sponge sort of technique, is great for doing. Uh, building up layers of texture, so if you wanted to do sort of heavily rusted sort of thing, right. you'd go with like a start with that dark brown and then go with a, a lighter brown and then maybe something like the red leather is really good and okay. then like a brighter orange. Because I remember doing the red leather on the uh, stuffed fables, yeah, uh, on the minions. Yep, on the uh, on those when yeah that, with that one we thinned it down and used mm -hmm. it as a wash to. Give that sort of rust impression. Dave says he just has a few minutes left before. Yeah. To work. Oh no, James! No, don't leave us. Thanks for joining us, James. We always appreciate you being here. Yep. He's, he's been here since the beginning. Yep. Since uh, I want to say, uh, say absolutely from episode one, James has been a presence on a lot of our content that we make here at Game Trade Media. Yep. So we do appreciate James is uh, coming in and sharing all of his painting and and everything and being a part of this. Yep. Much like we appreciate all of you all. All y'all. All y'all. Oh, yeah. All y'all coming That's like in. the fourth time you said that today. Y'all? Is that your... Uh, My word of the day? Word of the day, but you're, I was going to say your South Carolina time <laughs> sort of kicking back in. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I mean, plus my, my girlfriend's from Tennessee, so... Ah, uh, okay. Sweet tea and y'alls. All y'alls. Mm-hmm. Right. That makes sense. Okay, so that's looking pretty good right now. The, uh, I'm just going to hit the weapons as well before we do that. So I'm not sure if anybody remembers, but uh, what I did with the weapons was put a uh, little, ma a tiny magnet, really, really tiny magnet, uh, and one up here so that we've got swappability. On it's those so awesome. Bottles. So you've got uh, ultimate flexibility in what you want to do with your uh, gaming. I'm guessing this one, this kind of blaster, multi barrel blaster, mm. it would be great against infantry. Oh, yeah. Whereas this one, I think, would be obviously great against vehicles, or better against vehicles. Is that more of the laser? Yep. A big sort of laser shot. And then this one, which looks like a flamer, would probably be great against. Um, Ewoks. I mean, um, Yes, crispy, again. 
crispy. Yeah. Uh, infantry again, but infantry that's behind cover. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if it ignores cover, but I bet it does. Oof. So, that's what I'm thinking. Actually, I'll paint those weapons later. I'll come back to that. All right. Jumping around a little bit here. But... Uh, the cell phone days. Yes, when I was <laughs> painting using my cell phone as my camera. Yep. In my office at lunch. <laughs> and who's, and that's, it's crazy to think that uh, this Thursday coming up will be the 100th episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy to think that. Right? So make sure you guys all tune in for that. Everybody, and we'll uh, have a good old time celebrating 100 episodes of, you know, channeling our Bob Ross, yeah, painting skills, and we'll remember the days of uh, of Kurt. Days of Kurt. Yeah, when he was here. I was going to say days of thunder. Well, yeah, it was lightning and thunder <laughs> when he was here. <laughs> All the time. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just, maybe we'll take a look back at some of the previous episodes. Oh, oh. Can you get Johnny, Johnny and Leo should, to do yeah, like a say, mod? Should I make like an in memoriam, like of Kurt, like, like set to Sarah McLaughlin's I Will Remember You all in slow motion and everything? Ah. Uh. Sure. Uh, that sounds hilarious. I was going to say, I was going to say an awesome painting montage, but uh, or should I do that for the wigs that we used to wear? Oh yeah, <laughs> I can actually pull those out. I can pull the wigs out. Uh, I'm not going to wear the wig. Oh, oh, okay. Well, fine. Pull them out. Maybe I will then. You can wear both of them. No. 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 One of them is <laughs> really big. Right. The Bob, one of the Bob Ross wigs was like. Oh, man. Like, both of our heads together plus another head. It was just huge. Oh, wow. But that's when we made Kurt wear. Oh, okay. So, lucky him, right? Yeah. One Inch Hero says, make Kurt into a forest ghost in the background of the show. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Awesome. <laughs> That'd be great. Could totally do that. Kurt says, I'm always here. I'm always here. He's in and the then, chat. He has arrived. And then halfway through, as Kurt shows up, he just turns into Hayden Christensen all of a sudden. Yeah. Accurate. <laughs> you can't see it, but Johnny's jumping around. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Okay. Um, just quickly back to the painting for a second. Uh, <laughs> back to why we're here. Yep. <laughs> uh, so what I'm doing at the moment is... Uh, just hitting everything with a really thin down uh, soft tone from Army Painter. So this is how it comes out of the bottle over here and then just thinning it down. So using it as a glaze really to just to tint the, the white. Um, what I want to make sure is that the, uh, the upper surfaces are quite light as we work our way down, the um, the glaze will get a bit darker. And then I'll probably end up going back and doing a, a second coat. Just to uh, give that a little bit more depth. But you can see already that's how that's changing the the look from the, sort of the clean white of the uh, back leg there. It's a little bit darker. I'm not gonna. Nice. It's looking good. You use a larger brush, I think. Speed up that process. If I wanted to as well. This is where you, you could use some more of. I uh, use some of the uh, mixing medium. Oh, okay. Uh, to sort of. That's right here, the War Paints Mixing Medium? That's the one. Yeah. Well, I think it's that one. Uh, to thin it down, but not sort of break the the surface tension of it, or the pigmentation of it. But uh, this is working just fine for me. It's doing what I want. Nice. 
and the way the soft tone is going to work over the the white, giving it a slightly um, sort of yellowed look, is going to match well with our basing basing skin. So. On the bottom here, I'm just applying it, so it's almost like a, uh, applying it like a wash. I have a feeling my phone is going to die. No! Ever since I uh, downloaded that Vero app, yeah, the, it's like this new uh, social media platform. Yep. Um, it, my battery just hasn't been as uh, holding on to stuff. Right. No, I'm good. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of a lot of people whose stuff I usually sort of look at on on Facebook and uh, Instagram mm -hmm. have all been like, "Well, let's give it a shot." Yeah. And then, almost like an hour later, wow, it's really slow and laggy. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm thinking I'm going to probably just remove it because it's not. You know, you sign up for it, and then you can't even log on because it's not non uh, no connectivity to it. Um, yeah. it's, I don't think they're prepared for the amount of uh, traffic they were going to get. The amount of people who are ready to give it a go. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't help that uh, Chris Hardwick on Talking Dead Sunday night <laughs> said, "Hey, I got on the Vero, and you guys should check me. You know, follow me on Vero, so you know all the people right. watching that are going to jump over there and be like, okay." <laughs> yep. The walker? Uh, oh, yeah, as the pilot? Yep, there is. It's just off to the side here. So I'll finish, um, finish sort of uh, applying this and then I'll pop the guy on top. So. That looks so good. It's coming along pretty well. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that you can do, uh, and most times I probably would have done, is actually do this shading or this glazing before the chipping and do the chipping last because that way I could go back and highlight some areas if I wanted to and uh, well hey though Daniel have a wonderful evening he's uh saying he's got to go to bed since it's almost 9 p.m. there in Sweden uh maybe one day you and I get together and have fika and uh you know raise a glass and school to everybody yeah right yeah. yeah that would be good i'm not sure what it is right fika fika so fika in <laughs> sweden is kind of like um biscuits uh, we have uh, tea coffee and okay cookies and cookies. cheese and right, yeah. um stuff like that yep okay so like a little i don't know like coffee or tea in in the afternoon with your friends right right you okay right yeah Dave, I don't believe him. I think he's just making up names and using IKEA furniture names. So. Quite possibly. Quite yeah. possibly. That's um, I you know me. I don't <laughs> listen to half of what he says. Perfect. <laughs> People in the chat agree Vero kills battery life. Yeah. So interesting. That's Drew at one inch heroes is letting us know. So yeah, I'm probably gonna just just take it off my phone. Until they get it fixed. Yeah. If they get it. Even then, I don't know. It's There's so many platforms out there right it's now. A, it's like, why? It's kind of a... It's a tough uh, tough thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Release your service and... Have it be more popular than you're expecting and... Not be able to keep up and... Right. Then it suddenly... In less than a week. <laughs> would be... <laughs> exactly. I'm just going to delete it from my phone. Uh, so, there we go. That's looking pretty neat, I think. So, looks a little bit glossy there still, but that, um, that wash will dry. And I'll pop this pilot on. Yeah, it looks awesome. There we go. How does that look? 
It looks freaking awesome. Killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks all right. It's not bad. Now I'm just going to go around and look to see if there's some areas where I can, where some of it's pooling that I don't want it to pool, and pull those bits off, or spread it around, make it a little bit more even. Hey, what's up, Walter? Thanks for joining. Uh, Patrick Wells says, I have friends from Waxio, Wax Sweden, I, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, uh, who introduced him to Fika. Great way to catch up with friends. Absolutely. Right. I didn't even have to pay him to say that. So <laughs> now you guys know Fika is real. Yeah. You say that now. <laughs> it's not like drop bears. Drop bears are totally real. <laughs> challenge you to head to Australia and prove me otherwise. I'd love challenge to accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Going to, let's go to OzCon. <laughs> and we're off. Okay. Oh, Dave, I may have missed this, but is there also an Imperial uh, version of that for that little walker? No, no. Just the, uh, just the just, Rebel. Just Rebels? Rebel version. Okay. Yep. It's kind of funny. I... I I don't remember seeing it in any of the films. Uh, I believe it was in one of the animated series. Right, okay. Yeah, and uh, it's also been on a bunch of the, like, you can use that in the Star Wars Commander oh, game. Oh, right So, there we go. and I believe it's also been in comic books. And it's also in uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Battlefront right. 2. Battlefront 2. Yeah. Cool. Carl's there we go. Animated Clone Wars. See, Man. all the things I miss. Thanks for the uh, shout out there, Scott. <laughs> we're, we're, we appreciate that. Excellent. But, uh, yeah, for, for me, it was kind of like uh, some of the, the toys from um, the early 80s. Yeah. Where you could get a, a vehicle that, like, the Bosque yeah. um, rode around in. It's like this. This was never in anything. Never in anything. <laughs> but they were also they were always like the, the twenty dollar mm -hmm. sort of price point rather than the two hundred and twenty dollar for something much bigger. Or that, that was in the movie. If you have not so. seen it yet, you should watch um, uh, the, the Netflix series where it talks about the toys that we grew okay. up with. All right. And, the toys uh, that made us. Yeah, the toys that made us, yep. and they talk about those toys. Right. The ones yep. are like when Hasbro was like, "Well, we got to make these new." These new ships, and it's like this was never in a movie. Yeah. You know, like this transporter where the 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 you put the figures on the outside of the transport. It's yep. like, yep. Where was this? But then, of course, they start showing up in different conical right. Okay. Uh, things later on. I, I think I've got. I have almost all of those. Do you really? Yeah. Still. Yep. Nerd. Yeah, actually, I do. Still, my uh, my daughters have them now. All of my my Star Wars toys are in my daughter's room. Wow. So. I've impressed upon her the importance of making sure that all of the weapons do not get do lost. Do not get lost. Yep. Smart. <laughs> so, definitely cool. Okay, so this what oh, the glaze is almost dry. I think what we'll do while I'm waiting for that is do some work on the uh, the base. Start to paint the base in, but nice. uh, when it does dry, maybe not. No. Oh, there we go. I thought I was out of On the subject of toys, let me ask you this. Do you think that we will ever see a toy line that will have had the impact like those original Star Wars toys? Do you think there will ever be something that will have the amount of collectability that those toys have? Yes. We actually have seen it. Uh, if, for those of you that did not know this, early in the 90s, Power Rangers actually exceeded and became the most sold action figure of all time. So... But uh, as, do they have the same effect? As that's Star that's Wars what he's had? asking. He's, he's asking. He's talking like, about impact. He's not talking like but, sales numbers. Okay, or... <sighs> man. That, yeah, that's cultural a great... cultural impact. Oh man, that's a great question. I think it's difficult. Yeah, I think it's really difficult. Because uh, everything everything that comes after is always compared. Absolutely. So 
it's, it's, I don't think we will ever see anything like that. Just like based on like the effect that those movies have had yeah. on society and worldwide, I don't think that any kind of toy can ever match up to that. Yeah, yeah, very difficult. Like I you don't see in like fifty years from now, someone's going to be like vying for like Paw Patrol action figures. <laughs> Although my son might be, because <laughs> he loves that show. Yeah, I, I think it, it it would need to be something that's sort of quite different. Yeah. It's, it's something that we initially wouldn't recognize, obviously. Right. But it's only when you get some 20, 30 years down the track that you can say, oh, yeah, these match up, or these are more impactful. Walter says Pokemon. Pokemon as a game is, is pretty huge. There's no doubt. That's a... Yep. Um, but as far as like influencing a generation and mo actually multiple generations, like I can't, I can't think of any TV show that doesn't reference Star Wars at least once. You know, yeah. so it's. I mean, you don't hear about Pokemon in, you know, a lot of the TV shows, like even dramas. I was watching uh, The Good Doctor, and they made a Star Wars reference. Right. You know. What about Outlander? They probably don't reference it in that. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> you never know, though. Someone's going to say something. Yeah. And, watch, and watch when it comes back on. It's right. going to be the season where it's referenced. <laughs> yeah. The, um, I think it's, it's probably going to be something that's a, that comes from a video game. I agree. I, yeah. That it will be a video game property that's going to blast it off. Yeah. Uh, Walter had asked if they'd made any pony or miniatures for uh, Tales of Equestria, and I don't think so as of yet. Uh, if anybody's going to pick it up, it'll be, I, I want to say it's either Shinobi 7 or uh, Ninja Division will be the, the company that will make those miniatures, but I'm not sure if they have it as of yet. I don't, no, they haven't. So. Uh, if you're looking for some not, <laughs> some not ponies, uh, miniatures, uh, Impact Miniatures has some. Okay. Yeah. Great chibi ponies. I actually think uh, it was referenced on here. Impactminiatures.com slash index blah 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 yep. blah blah. Chibi ponies. Chibi ponies. Yeah, that's uh, D David Powell's. Dave Powell's, yep. Yeah. Cool. How you doing, Dave? Caleb asks, I'm new to the stream. I see Best of Baltimore glass. Are one of you or both of you from Maryland? We are both in Maryland. Yep. Uh, we are in, uh, <laughs> just outside of Baltimore. We are in Timonium, Maryland. But we are not, neither of us are from Maryland. Originally from there. Originally. Yep. I'm originally from uh, Michigan. Right. And I'm he's a, from Down Under. I'm originally from uh, England. <laughs> <laughs> he's not from England. He's from Australia, land of the drop bears. Yep. Carl brings up a good point. He said, for influencing the market and the culture, He-Man has to be up there. The show and was solely to sell those figures. And it was up there, and, and it, that's why it's on that show as well, the, yeah. uh, the toys that made us, you know, or whatever you know, it's No, Carl, you're right. I was thinking, like, will we ever see another thing like it? Yeah. I don't know, man. But still, today, like, there'd be a lot of people who don't know anything about He-Man. That's true. Hmm? You know who doesn't know anything about He-Man? I know about He-Man. You're aware of He-Man? Yeah. Yeah. Not like Star Wars. I don't remember any of He-Man. I know that I watched it a lot, but I don't remember any of it. <laughs> you fools! <laughs> Skeletor. Oh, okay, right here. <laughs> it was awesome. That's the one thing about He-Man that I th found was that they did a really good job of um, putting good humor in there. Right. Uh, but my favorite cartoon that had a toy line from the 80s besides Star Wars uh, was Thundercats. Right. I love Thundercats, man. <laughs> that was my jam. Cool. Especially uh, Tigra and Panthro. Okay, so there we go. It's starting to dry. So I'm going to put some splashes of color in. 
Splashes of Splashes color. Splashes of color. Yeah. What color are you going to use? I'm going to use some um, red. Nice. Red 5 standing by. <laughs> What's your guys' favorite quote from Star Wars? That's a great question for the group. Yeah. Yeah, for everybody in chat. What's your favorite quote? Everybody should know what mine is by now. Um, it's a Vader line. Yeah, it's about Admiral Piet. It is. I can never remember. You failed me for the last time, Admiral Piet. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. It's like, that poor guy. My favorite has always been, I have altered the deal. Pray I don't alter it further. That's a good one, too. <laughs> Obi-Wan has taught you well. I was like, really? You just like, spent 15 minutes with me on Right. The, on the Millennium Falcon. On the Millennium Falcon on the way here. And, and you he, killed him. <laughs> seems a bit crap, really. Yeah. Walter says, it's a trap. Yeah. Yeah, that's a... Talk about classic classic line that is used a lot in pop culture. Yep. Is uh, Admiral Akbar's line there? Admiral Snackbar. Snackbar. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Ah. Yep. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna paint out a panel here, and so I've just got a mix of. Uh, the Citadel Mephiston Red, which is a nice sort of solid bright red, mixed with some Vallejo Hull Red, which is a dark, um, very deep red. Kind of matches the uh, primer coat that is used on a lot of uh, tanks. So, but it gives a good solid reference, a uh, good solid uh, sort of look there which is great for painting reds, as we know. I find your lack of faith disturbing. disturbing. It's another great line. Yeah. There's so many good lines in Star Wars. Page turners, they were not. <laughs> That's a new one, right? Yeah, it's from one of the new ones. That was from uh, The Last Jedi. Which I know a lot of people are like, ugh, but <laughs> I enjoyed it. Me too. Okay, I hope that others did not. We've only got a few minutes left, so go ahead and uh, speak on our things that we always talk about in regards to all this awesome stuff we get to do here at Painting Happy Little Minis and Game Trade Media. First off, again, thanks everybody for joining us today and every day that you are able to uh, swing by and listen to us talk about painting and all other weird stuff we bring up. All the other <laughs> craziness. The crazy. Uh, um, where I get schooled regularly on pop culture. All good. I'm just immersed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, if you have not yet joined the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, please do so after the after we're done here. Just go uh, type it in in the search uh, bar there and uh, join us over there. We'll add you in. Uh, Dave and I will race to find out who's there, and we'll add you guys into the group. It'll be me. It'll be me. It always is you. Yeah. It is. Um, so that you can you know ask questions, share all the cool miniatures that you're painting, because we love to see the work that everybody's doing. Uh, it's inspiring, and it also keeps people in you know uh, motivated to continue to paint. Yep. Um, if you have not or are not currently a part of your local game store's community, go check out your friendly local game store. Uh, if you don't have one near you. Uh, maybe put a, a meetup together so you can meet uh, like-minded uh, uh, gamers and get together and talk about all the cool things and play games and paint and whatever. Yep. Uh, there's lots of options out there, but we, we are uh, staunch supporters of the uh, friendly local game store. Yep. So make sure you guys go check them out. And uh, building communities. And building communities, absolutely. Uh, you can also pick up Star Wars Legion on March 22nd at your friendly local game store. It will be available. But until that time, make sure you enter in to win this <laughs> one that we're going to be giving away. The entire Wave 1 that we're, we've been painting here at Painting Happy Little Minis will be available to somebody 
who enters into the contest, and that's on our Facebook page, on Game Trade Media Facebook page. You can find it right there, enter it, uh, do all the little entry points, and uh, someone's going to win it. Oh. It's going to be really awesome. Okay, we're going to pop this over on the spinner. Okay. The basing doesn't look that great just yet. Oh, sorry, it's not It's not on yet. There we go. The basing looks amazing. No, no, no. The basing's got a lot of work to do, but... <clears throat> I think Let's it looks so good. Da, da. Da, da. Yep, looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Yeah. I think one of the things I might do, um, just to match up the edges of those... Um, with the front armor panels, mm -hmm. is do a little bit of damage on the the red. Oh yeah. But actually, uh, so mix up a little bit of really pale gray and uh, bone color, mm -hmm. just to do some little chips on the edge of the red paint. So it's like the red paint is chipped off the white paint. Right. But the white paint hasn't chipped off hasn't chipped off. The, okay, that'll be so cool. So layers and depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks so, so good. But yeah, came together pretty well. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad for now. Not bad for an hour. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. All right, so, so there you guys have it. This has been Penny Happy Little Minis. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.